Well, welcome back to Balanced Health. Joining us now is Dr. David Zapeda from Dreyer Medical Clinic to advise us on how to take better care of our digestive systems. Welcome, Dr. David Zapeda. Thanks for having Glad me. Glad you joined us today. Welcome to the show, Doc. Thank and you. we have so much to talk about, but I'd like to just start by asking, can you take us through the digestive process quickly from chewing sure. to elimination? Absolutely. The process of uh, digestion begins with uh, mastication, the, the chewing and breaking up of food uh, particles. The, um, particles have to be broken down into small quantities and small pieces that can, actually can be systemically absorbed. Mm -hmm. Once the um, food is, is, is masticated or chewed, it goes to the esophagus, basically a, a channel that uh, carries food to the stomach. Mm -hmm. The stomach acts as a, a reservoir to churn the food, uh, ruminate if you will, such that food goes from the top part of the stomach to the lower part of the stomach and then goes back up and only very small particles actually can then enter into the small bowel for oh, absorption. Okay. Um, the process of digestion actually begins in the mouth. Salivary amylase, amylase is an enzyme that breaks down starch. Um, and that's pretty much where the, where the digestive process begins. And then it um, goes from the small intestine to the large intestine. That is correct. Most of the, um, in, in, its, in its plainest sense, um, uh, digestion can be broken down into carbohydrate, protein, and, and fat digestion. Carbohydrate digestion is mainly small bowel, the proximal beginning part of the hmm, small bowel. Okay. Fat digestion is mostly distal, farthest part of the small bowel, and then protein is prox or upper part of small bowel to mid small bowel. Interesting. I never knew that that different foods were digested in different spots. That is correct. And minerals, like Joe was talking about earlier, most are uh, most are absorbed in the proximal, the higher part of the small bowel. Okay. Well, okay. Doctor, talk talk about <laughs> enzymes. You, you mentioned amylase enzymes. You know, there's, there's protease enzymes and different types of right. enzymes that are. Uh, designed to take different types like proteins and fats differently. Uh, tell us what an enzyme is and if you would uh, encourage our audience to chew. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Very important. Uh, no, enzymes Joe, are, are basically catalysts and what they do is they're, um, they're uh, um, say chemicals that actually help in, in the breakdown process if you will. Um, as foods uh, are more complex if you will the body has to absorb things in its elemental nature. So uh, for example Carbohydrates, carbohydrates that we eat have to be cleaved or broken down to, into its simplest substance for absorption. Um, that's in both, again, in the beginning in the mouth and in the, in the, um, in the small bowel. The pancreas secretes several enzymes. Um, pancreas uh, uh, secretes proteases for breaking down uh, uh, proteins. Um, it secretes uh, amylase, which again breaks down uh, carbohydrates, and also secretes lipase, which begins the process of digestion for fat. Okay. Um, Protein um, digestion also actually begins in the stomach. We have um, proteases which are activated in the stomach that begin that process of, again, breaking down that compound into its elemental form such that such that, at that elemental form can then enter into the small bowel and be absorbed. Well, now, enzymes, we take enzymes. Is that because the body doesn't always produce enough or do some people need more? Absolutely. There are, there are certain diseases whereby uh, patients will require supplemental enzymes. Um, enzymes that are in foodstuffs are very limited. Some, um, some foodstuffs in their, in their raw sense or in their purest form will have enzymes, but most of the uh, cooking that we do or preparing of food actually can actually denature or destroy those enzymes. So most of it is up to the body in terms of actually cleaving those, those compounds for absorption. Um, Thank you for saying that, because we have been talking yeah. over and over about people overcooking their food. Oh, and as yeah. we get older, these digestive enzymes, there not as many of them are hanging out in our stomach as, as used to, right? I mean, and it's correct. There are conditions, Jill, where you can have um, atrophy, or actually the, the lining of the stomach can actually thin, such that the proteases, which normally break down proteins, are are are, are lessened, mm -hmm. and certainly that can contribute to protein calorie malnutrition. Um, there are diseases such as pancreatic insufficiency associated with cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis. These are diseases that patients do require supplemental enzymes, if you will, mm -hmm. that if they don't have those, uh, they, they clearly can develop malnutrition. Well, uh, before we get off enzymes, and I want to talk about Crohn's, but what about a person who, for instance, is, milk, is lactose intolerant, right. and then they have to take enzymes to help them digest dairy, right? right. And what you're talking about truly is lactate. Um, milk, as you know, is, 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 a, uh, is a sugar and a protein. The sugar in milk uh, actually has two elemental um, components, has glucose and galactose. In order for the body to absorb those, it cannot absorb that element in and of itself in bulk. It has to be cleaved, and that's what the enzyme does. It breaks down that bond between glucose and galactose so that each moiety or each, each sugar group can be absorbed. Patients that are lactose intolerant then require a supplemental enzyme to actually um, 
to actually make that cleavage so that those elements can be absorbed. Uh, you can develop lactose intolerance from an acute gastroenteritis, an acute uh, viral illness, mm -hmm. which sometimes that can uh, last for up to 10 days to even 21 days after you've had the acute uh, illness. Uh, those are, that's why we tell people to avoid dairy products after you've had an acute rotavirus, an acute enterovirus. Okay. Okay. The enzymes mm -hmm. that um, actually exist on the, uh, or for cleavage, actually exist on what they call the brush border, the highest part of the small bowel, and those enzymes are the ones that are lost. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about some of these conditions because uh, they can be extremely con uh, serious, like Crohn's, which can be life-threatening. Right. What is Crohn's? There are two types of inflammatory bowel disease that we as gastroenterologists see. Uh, Crohn's disease is a um, disease that affects uh, the transmural part of the, the intestine. It's a disease that can actually affect anywhere from the mouth uh, to the anus. Uh, most commonly, hmm. it affects the distal part of the small bowel, what we call the ileum. Um, it's a disease that necessarily we don't necessarily have an explanation as to why people get it. Mm. There are some potential genetic predispositions, um, but again, there is not really clear-cut explanation as to why people get Crohn's disease. And what, what are the symptoms? Symptoms um, most commonly are increased stool frequency, so diarrhea. We see a lot of people with uh, uh, bleeding. Certainly malnutrition, so weight loss is a big issue. Patients can present with uh, other types of other GI, other non-GI issues. They can have arthritis. Really? They can present with rashes. But most commonly, those people have the uh, have the uh, how should I say the, the, the GI issues associated with the arthritis and what have you. Mm -hmm. but there's a serious inability there to absorb nutrients and utilize them in the body. Obviously, right? No question, Joe. Absolutely. Well. well Right, spinning right off of Crohn's is, is something that we're seeing just as much of. It seems to almost be a household word now, and that's diverticulitis. Um, I know we have diverticuli within our, um, but what is, when it becomes an itis, how does it go from diverticuli to diverticulitis? What happens? Excellent question, Joe. What we have is, as you know, the, the, the intestine itself is a hollow tube. And along that hollow tube, there are muscles that are not a complete sheath of muscles. These are muscles that are interdigitated with themselves. Whenever there is no muscle, the bowel wall intrinsically is weak you get a diverticuli. Mm -hmm. Having diverticulosis, or having diverticuli in the colon is diverticulosis. Whenever a fragment of stool breaks off and actually gets into that diverticuli, mm -hmm. it can micro-rupture, mm -hmm. so-called diverticulitis. Uh, consequences of that can be a localized issue of pain, with sometimes fever, or sometimes a, a full-blown attack of, of uh, uh, significant pain that requires surgical intervention. Mm -hmm. Is that pain it can actually cause from matter getting stuck? I mean, is that why you tell people you, they can't eat seeds and stuff like that when they have diverticulitis? Joe, that's gone full circle. You know, when I was in training about 15, 20 years ago, the, 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 uh, the, the issue was don't eat, don't eat particular, a lot of particular matter, avoid popcorn, avoid peanuts. Uh, studies that now suggest that actually that may that bulk may actually be good. Hmm. Wow! Uh, so that uh, uh, people actually eat more of that actually have decreased attacks of diverticulitis. But what happens is is that whenever there is a breach of the colon wall, you get an inflammatory state that irritates the peritoneum. Peritoneum is the glove of the intestine, and that's what causes hmm. the the pain and the fever. Wow! And quickly before we go, have to go to a break, what about irritable bowel syndrome (IBS)? I mean, that's a household word. Very common. Uh, we see it, um, it must be 50, 60 percent of my practice. Um, really? it's, it's a condition whereby people have a lot of times diarrhea alternating with constipation. They have abdominal pain, sometimes worsened with stress. What, um, what causes it and what can you do about it? No clear cut explanation for it, truly. Um, we do have treatments. We try to avoid medical treatments. If we can, we usually use high fiber diets. Okay. We use, uh, tell people to avoid stressors, which can certainly initiate attacks it is, of irritable bowel. Stress actually affects it. No question it, about it. it. That's been shown. Well, we'll talk about more about this when we come back. But for more information, go to www.tln.com and check on shows and then check on, uh, click on Balanced Health. Or you can call 888-242-9393 for a copy of today's show. And coming up in our healthy cooking segment, get your taste buds ready for some really tasty pumpkin mm -hmm. bread. Stay tuned. It's going to be good.